Hello and welcome to Premier.tv. Now imagine for a second your group of friends. What do you see in 25 years time? Could it be a church of millions spanning two continents in over 50 countries and growing all the time? Well, I'm joined by a man who can honestly say that that's true for him. Dr. Kimui, welcome to the programme. Thank you very much. Now, first of all, tell me, you've got this pretty big church. How did it all start? Well, every great thing starts in a small way. You know, somebody becomes a president or, of a country or prime minister, but she you know, was a baby before he became an adult. The same thing with the church, the body of Christ. In our local church, we started with 15 people, 10 and 5. And these were just uh, young people, most of them unmarried, and uh, with that small group, a little cell, as the Lord began with His grace and the power of the Spirit of God, we continue to grow. And right now, the local church in Lagos City, which used to be the commercial center of, uh, of uh, the country, uh, we are now more than 120,000 members. Mm -hmm. And in the whole country, we are getting to a million members. All over Africa, we are now in 40 countries in Africa. And uh, what started in a small way, uh, the Lord has now enlarged to uh, this place. But that's exactly what Jesus predicted, you know, when he said uh, the kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven the church is like a little seed, the smallest of all. You plant that seed, and with uh, the weather, the watering, the care, and everything, cultivation, becomes a large tree, bigger than every other tree. And is this something that you always wanted to do and be a part of? Well, I always wanted to contribute positively and meaningfully to the lives of other people, uh, be a challenge to other people, get them from where they are to where they ought to be. But I never dreamt of uh, being used of God to touch so many lives. And um, do you have, I'm going to use this word in the, the kind of purest sense of the word, but do you have a proudest moment? Is there something that you just think, wow, well, you know, that was amazing? The proudest moment, uh, I would say, in 1985, after we've been growing gradually and in a systematic way, we had uh, a crusade in Lagos, and it was uh, the first of, of its kind in all the events we've had. We've had gatherings of people, and we've had God moving in mighty ways. But 1985, December, we had this uh, crusade at the stadium, and the 80,000 capacity stadium actually overflowed. And every night we had about 120,000 to 130,000. And uh, the, the, the many people that came to know Jesus Christ as their personal savior, within that one week, it was it was a greater surprise to us. And of course, God touched the lives of the people. Many people were healed of various uh, illnesses, diseases that we, we knew this was God. And when we finished, I knew it had to be God, and it was, I wouldn't say the proudest moment, but the, probably the most joyful moment that you have, fulfillment, and you know that God is really at work. Mm -hmm. So you've got a church, as you say, of over a million people just in, in Africa, not in, in Europe as well. What's your biggest challenge leading such a large group of people? You know, the biggest challenge is to see how you keep relevant you know, with all the growth, that you do not begin to see the people just in the crowd, in the multitude, that you still need to touch individual lives, the children and the young people, the men, the women, uh, the men and the women, touching the lives of the people where they hurt and where they actually need you. And for you not to get so high that you lose touch with the people, that you're still able to, you know, get low and know that God loves individuals and you still need to love individuals. And that when God looks at the world with all the billions of people in the world is not thinking about we're not just a part of the number just to make up statistics that he loves us as individuals and the challenge is to keep that humble and lowly that you touch the lives of individuals as you're expanding and growing so even though it's such a, a large group of people your focus is very much still that 15 people in a, in a Bible study type of Something thing. like that. Brilliant. Yeah. Um, and is that something that's, that's obviously worked really, really well in Africa? Is that something that will translate um, to the West and to the UK, or does it need to change? Like? Well, it, uh, sociologically, from country to country, continent to continent, things uh, change. We think in different ways. We have different backgrounds. 
and uh, the way we have the, the network of relationships in Africa will be different from the expression of that same network of relationships here in, here in Europe or in, UK, in the UK. But all the same, we, we cannot live in isolation. The way the Lord has uh, created us, there is always a vacuum in the, in the mind, in the heart. We need one another. We need to touch base with one another, interact with one another, and see how we can positively contribute to the joy and the success of our neighbors. And uh, Christianity is, um, is a kind of uh, lifestyle. It's not just what we know in the head or what we practice on Sunday in our denominations, but how the grace of God comes into us, we become godly, and have the nature of God wanting to touch the lives of other people. So I'll say whether it's uh, Europe or Africa or anywhere in the world, individuals still need other people. And we who are Christians uh, need to touch the lives of other people. Would you say that's the kind of the key to church growth? I'll say if not the key, is one of the keys to church growth, that uh, people know that those who don't know Christ, they are not interested in, first of all, what doctrines we believe and how zealous or passionate we are about what we believe. Uh, they, they want to find out what's in it for me, that is, uh, you are a Christian and so what, how does that benefit my life? And when they see us Christians touching their lives, being concerned about who they are and, um, and what they are going through, it, that actually matters. It's one of the keys to church growth. Um, now, as well as being um, a I say mega pastor. I'm, I'm going to say mega pastor. I think that's nice. Um, as well as being a mega pastor, you're also um, a, a big evangelist as well. So, what would be your top top three tips for evangelism? For evangelism, number one is to have the mind of Christ and to have the passion that Christ had. Um, after Jesus had done everything that he did, he was still. He looked at Jerusalem. And then he wept over Jerusalem to have that tenderness of heart, to have that concern for people, and to think of what Christ means to everyone. Uh, I think uh, that that's that's very that's very necessary. And then sometimes when you are in a large church or you've seen large crusades and thousands of people, sometimes even millions, uh, coming in a single night to uh, hear the gospel, we forget sometimes that. Although you have so many people inside, you have more than those who are inside, you have many of them outside. And always to still think about the people who have not known Christ, that passion. Uh, for us not to be used to seeing large crowds, we forget many people are still there that need the Lord. And yet I'll still come back to that same individual touch of the lives of people. Philip was in Samaria and he saw a large crowd. It was, in fact, he said the whole city was full of joy. And then the Spirit of God led him out of that big crowd and then there was just one man on his way in the, in the desert in the, together. And uh, the Spirit of God said, join that chariot. For us to not just get used to success and then to be compassionate about individuals and not to think of large numbers, but to know that just reach the people and touch the people who are hurting, I think uh, that's, that should be one of the top priorities of those of us who have seen some level of success. And just finally, um, what's your dream for the future? What's next for you? Well, my dream of the future is that God will take me to where he wants to take me to touch more lives, to become more tender, more loving, more like Christ. And then to be able to, that when I breathe my last breath, to be able to say, God helped me to plant a flower in the life of somebody. And that somebody can say, I remember that man, he touched my life. That's okay. It's been so fantastic talking to you. Thank you very much. God bless you. Thank, Thank you. Very you. Much. Uh, that's all we've got time for right now. But you can get more tips on leadership, preaching, and evangelism from a host of experts in our teaching channel. And I'll see you next time on Premier.tv.